now joined by the opinions editor of the Daily Telegraph, James Morrow. Welcome to the program, James. Great to see you, Rita. Good to see you too. We've got plenty to get through. Let's start with a film that's causing somewhat of a stir among the woke reviewers. It's Guy Ritchie's new film, The Gentleman. The plot begins to thicken. Now, I can't be specific about the heroes and zeros, but our protagonist is a hungry animal. <laughs> Now, James, the criticism is that the film is stained with casual racism and toxic masculinity. But I've got to tell you, audiences are loving it. It's got a, a score of 84% on Rotten Tomatoes. And I saw it this week and I could not stop laughing. It is, I think, one of Guy Ritchie's best films. Um, uh, there's this uh, divide now, though, between the reviewers and the audience, where uh, certain films will get a very high audience score, but its review score will be pretty low. Yeah, this is something that we see over and over again. And by the way, you know, when you start talking about casual racism, I start to think, well, what kind of other kinds of racism are there? Is there sort of semi-formal racism? Is there garden party <laughs> racism? You know, what's the, what's the dress code on these things? But, yeah, we, we see this over and over again. You know, we've seen this with a lot of movies that are supposed to be you know, really earnest and really politically correct. A lot of the reboots of some of the superhero movies and stuff that they've tried to make very lefty and very PC and push a message. You know, those get huge reviews from the critics who are like, oh, yeah, rah, rah, this is so good. You know, it's all about, you know, all the, the diversity and this and that and the other thing. And people go and they see it and they say, well, this is, this is crap because this is, uh, this is just a movie that's trying to hit me over the head with a message rather than tell, tell a good story. And it sounds like this is the sort of thing that's happening here. I mean, I haven't seen this film you have. You say it's a lot of fun, um, and I assume it's kind of your typical Guy Ritchie kind of caper sort of film. Um, and, uh, you know, people, people, if people were really offended by it, I don't think you know, you'd see an 84 rating on the Rotten Tomatoes, would you? No, I don't think you would. Now, there has been a lot of anger this week after the shock cancellation of Sound Relief, a major concert organised to raise funds for bushfire relief. Uh, the organisers have been slammed for failing to provide a clear reason for the move. Uh, now, I'll read out a bit of the, uh, the organisers' statement. They said, since announcing our intention to undertake Sound Relief 2020, the offer of assistance from international and domestic artists, industry, media and suppliers has been set second to none. However, some Sound Relief is a series of concert events that we don't wish to stage lightly and after careful consideration we believe proceeding with the concerts in March won't produce the impactful result <laughs> that we believe these events can and should have. It is clear that there is no overnight fix for the issues our beautiful country is currently facing and our discussions for any future event are subsequently shifting to restoration, recovery and prevention and a view to maximising results to best benefit these areas. What, what are they saying, James? I and mean, what's the real story here? Rita, I, I have no idea. And uh, I just want to say uh, to everybody who's out there, boo, wake up, wake up, wake up, back up. Uh, because that, that statement was the most soporific, turgid oh. thing. You know, I was reading it before I came on air here. And when I hit the word impactful, I mean, impactful? What does that even mean? This is an assault on the English language, this whole statement. I don't know what happened here. I don't know what the real story is. I suspect that maybe, you know, all of that support maybe might not have been quite as uh, quite as there as they say, uh, or maybe it was and uh, they just suddenly realized they had something far too big for them to handle. Yeah, it's interesting because they did do these concerts back in 2009 after the, uh, the bushfires in Victoria and the floods in Queensland and they raised $8 million and had huge crowds. So it's just a very bizarre end to, to, to that entire announcement. And, and the fans are upset because of that statement we just read out because no one knows what it means. Well, um, exactly. Now, yeah. Now, I'm going to show you something a little different here, James, uh, but warning for anyone who's uh, a little bit delicate because it's going to get a little bit risque here. This is an 80-year-old pensioner called Iris Jones's Romance with a 35-year-old Egyptian toy boy has fascinated Britain and sparked debate about whether her young lover, Mohammed, is after her money. But no one expected this when Iris appeared on popular British program This Morning. Pretty rough. 
<laughs> it was rough. I'd been, nobody had been near, near me for 35 years. I thought I was a virgin again. Oh, really? Anyway, but um, can I say what we use? A whole tube of KY jelly? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can say that. You can say that. <laughs> and, and the thing is, I couldn't walk the next day. <laughs> I felt as if I'd been riding a horse. <laughs> Saddle sore wasn't in it. What, what can you say, James? Uh, there are now calls to make Iris a dame or at least give her a <laughs> TV show. <laughs> well, I mean, you know... Honestly, there is um, eye-opening. Um, it's but it's there honest. Are people it's people concerned. Look, I mean, you know, uh, you know, you said that some people want to make her a dame. I'd say that she's probably comported herself with more dignity than a number of members of the royal family these days. Uh, yes. So, you know, maybe why not? Look, I mean, there's two kind of ways you can approach this. And, uh, you know, one is to get all very earnest and say either, you know, he's after her money or she's exploiting him because he's from a, you know, a, a developing world, third world background and he's, she's exploiting him. Maybe, you know, maybe they're both exploiting each other, which is fine. You know, they're all consenting adults here. Or maybe they're all just having a bit of fun. So... You know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy for everybody to have their fun. Um, you know, she's looking great for 80, and I hope I'm so well-preserved uh, at that age many decades hence, many decades hence, Rita. And, uh, you know, I guess, well, have fun. I'm not sure I necessarily would want to be hearing about that over my morning bagel and coffee, though. Well, I don't think anyone expected to be hearing that <laughs> level of detail, to be no, honest with no. you. But once you hear it, you can't unhear it. So I have no. to share it with everybody because, you know, why should I just be the one to see that? <laughs> uh, now, you mentioned the royal family and there are reports today that uh, Meghan Markle is eyeing a return to show business and actively looking for a manager or an agent. Of course, she already has an enthusiastic agent spruiking her talents in <laughs> Harry. Have a look at this. Oh, that's a bit cringeworthy, James. Yeah, is, of course, yeah. Harry trying to get her voiceover work with Disney, which he succeeded in, so he got the job done. But do you see a return to, to acting for Meghan Markle? Well, I mean, you know, her acting career wasn't you know, all of that hot, um, to be honest, before she hooked up with the prince. But um, so, I, I, I mean, look, the, the, first of all, that clip there was one of the most sort of uncomfortable things to watch because you can see Bob Iger <laughs> and he was just like, yeah, OK, sure, you know, loved, I'd love to, I'm just going to go over here now. I don't know if any of you, anybody out there has seen the great old Jerry Lewis, uh, Robert De Niro movie, The King of Comedy, but it had that sort of same energy of the desperate performer trying to, you know, get a gig with the big guy. But... Uh, but, um, but no, look, I, I just kind of feel sorry for this whole equation. I, I feel like she'll get a bit of work uh, out of the publicity around this, but I just don't know that, you know, the former suit star quite has, has it, the, the big Hollywood roles she's, she's hoping for. I kind of feel like, you know, we're only a few years away from being in Markle's biggest headline being that she gets in a fight over what she's wearing in terms of the dress code at a Qantas lounge somewhere. You know, I just, uh, I just don't feel like this, this career is going a, a long way for her. Oh, goodness me, that, that would be a, a drop from being a duchess. Uh, now, the Super Bowl is on on Monday, and that means another stellar halftime show, we hope. This time we're going to have Shakira and Jennifer Lopez. What do you think? Is it going to live up to the hype, or uh, is that uh, a bit 2005? Hey, well, that's what I thought. I thought, boy, you know, what decade are we in? What presidential administration <laughs> are we in here? This all seems a little bit tired. To be honest, I don't think I can recall the last time there was a great Super Bowl halftime show. I mean, you know, there are all these sort of oh, big Beyonce overproduced... Beyonce and Bruno Mars was pretty good a couple of years ago. You didn't like that? Uh, look, it's just, maybe it's not my th sort of thing, Rita. You know, it's... it's um, uh, <laughs> but, you know, they're not going to get the Brandenburg Orchestra out there for me, are they? You know, so... Uh, oh, so... goodness <laughs> me. You are a toff. That's what you are. Prince was probably what? the best one in recent years. You're a toff. Now, I've got to quickly show you this Super Bowl ad because, of course, the Super Bowl means the most expensive ads in history. And this one cost a grateful dog owner $6 million. I'm a cancer survivor had a tumor on my heart and only a 1% chance of survival. I'm alive thanks to a cutting edge program at the University of Wisconsin School of Veterinary Medicine. Their research has the potential to save millions of pets' lives. Pets make a difference in your life. You can make a difference in theirs. Donate now at weathertech.com donate. 
Uh, another example of dog owners being obsessed with their pets. That dog yeah, owner is so what's grateful. What's wrong with that, Rita? What's wrong with that? Well, I know, you, I know you're a proud dog owner, but th that guy spent $6 million promoting the, the veterinary hospital that saved his dog, so it's incredible. Well, you now. know, good on them. Good on Scout the dog, too. <laughs>